Well, hello again and welcome. My name is Pastor Steve Ramsey at Good Hope Lutheran Church in Arlington, Ohio. I also have the privilege of serving St. John Lutheran Church in Dola, Ohio. A blessed and happy Easter to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like to begin by reading to you from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16. This is the story of Easter. And this is what it says. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint the body of Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were afraid. But he said to them, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Look, this is the place they laid him. Now go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied among you all in the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think it's safe to say that for the better part of 2,000 years, not many Christians at all have really liked the way the Gospel of Mark ends. Most Christians over the years, when they stop to think about it, are actually kind of puzzled by the way the Gospel of Mark ends. Puzzled and maybe not real pleased either. What it says, of course, is that on Easter Sunday, very early in the morning, a group of women went to the tomb of Jesus in order to anoint his body and properly grieve his death. But when they got to the tomb, much to their surprise, they found the stone had already been rolled away from the entrance. And looking inside, they did not find the body. But they did encounter an angel of God dressed in white. And the angel said, you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just like he said he would be. Now go and tell his disciples. And the women ran from the tomb, it says, but they didn't tell anybody. They didn't tell a single soul because they were afraid. For the better part of 2,000 years, Christians have read the Gospel of Mark and puzzled over this last verse. Surely, Mark must have left something out. Surely, once the women knew that Jesus had been raised from the dead, well, surely they danced and sang for joy. Surely, they now understood that all their sins had been forgiven and that death had been destroyed forever. Surely, it dawned on them that because of Jesus, they could now look forward to life everlasting in heaven. Surely this was a cause of joy and gladness. Surely they ran and told the good news to everyone they met. Come on, Mark, it's Easter Sunday. Surely that's what really happened. Nope, says Mark. No singing, no dancing, no shouting for joy. And they didn't tell anybody anything either because they were afraid. If you look at your Bible at home this afternoon or sometime this evening, you'll notice that there are a couple of alternative endings to Mark. In these add-on verses, we get the kind of conclusion we maybe sort of expected. 
joyful, happy people celebrating Easter, sharing the good news, so confident in Jesus, they can even pick up snakes. It's in there. These alternative endings, however, are clearly forgeries written by later believers who wanted to, you know, make the gospel end better. They wanted to clean up Mark and make it end right somehow. But no. Mark ends at verse 8, where it says the women didn't do anything except run because they were afraid. Mark was a witness. Mark knew the story, and I have to believe he's simply telling it like it is. Mark knew that the followers of Jesus had been pretty much scared all along, pretty much scared of everything. They had been scared of the storm at sea, you may recall. They were scared that day on the boat of the storm at sea. Then they were scared of Jesus when he calmed the storm at sea. Scared of the Romans, scared of the Jews. Scared that things in this world would never, ever change. Then scared when Jesus said, oh, yes, they will. Yes, they will change. Everything will change, and so will you. You know what? That was a scary thought, too. They were scared that Jesus was not for real, and what would that mean? They were scared that Jesus was for real, and what would that mean? They were scared that Jesus had died, and you know what? We could be next. And now they just met an angel by the side of an empty tomb, so of course they were scared by that as well. Mark knew his subject matter. Mark knew that the followers of Jesus had pretty much been scared all along of everything. Mark knows his subject matter, all right. And I dare say Mark knows his audience today as well. Mark knows us. We're scared too, aren't we? Maybe a little. I think we're scared a lot these days, and by a lot of things. The economy and the environment. My job, my retirement, my pension, my insurance, my country, my world. There are acts of terrorism, both homegrown and international. There's violence and crime all around. There's our health. Obviously, we still have the COVID thing to deal with. But COVID isn't our only worry. There are still other diseases, too, and people we know and love have them. It's kind of scary at times. And then, of course, there's our politics. Vote for me, not because I have any idea what to do whatsoever, but because I can make you think that guy over there is even scarier. Vote for me because I can make you afraid of him. The politics of fear. And both sides have bought into it. And you have too. And maybe most of all, our children's futures. I mean, what kind of a world are we leaving them with anyway? What kind of a life are we making for them? We have not done a great job with the world lately. And some chickens are coming home to roost, so to speak. And I think we know that. I think we know that we've made our bed and we're going to have to lie in it. And I think that scares us. There is some fear in our lives today. And then, of course, this whole faith thing. Who is Jesus, anyway? I don't want to take him too seriously, because I'm afraid of the changes I might have to make in my life personally. 
but I don't want to blow him off completely either because I guess I'm afraid of going to hell. Mark knew his subject matter, the people back then. And Mark knows us. Fear had hold of the women at the tomb, and fear wants to grab hold of us as well. But here's something else that Mark knows, and you need to know it too. Mark knows the gospel. Mark knows this Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is and remains the one and only Son of the one and only God who came into this world and faced the worst it has to offer. He faced the worst of this world and did so every day without fear. Jesus confronted demons and cast them out. Jesus had people who hated him and he faced them every day. He was kind to them every day. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was poor. In the end, Jesus was the victim of state-sponsored violence, and he died on a cross. And he went through all of this for you. He went through all of this without fear. He died on a cross and on the third day rose again. The tomb is empty. Death has lost. The tomb is empty. Jesus wins. The tomb is empty, Jesus wins, and if we just hold on to Jesus in faith, we win too. He promised. No fear. Fear is the enemy of everything we seek to do. Fear is the enemy of everything we are called to be. Fear is the enemy, Jesus wins. Mark knew that. And Mark wants you to know it too. Mark wants you to take a deep breath and admit your fears. Mark wants you to look them in the eye. Mark wants you to take Jesus by the hand and then look your fear in the eye. And when you do, when you have hold of this crucified, risen Jesus Christ and he has hold of you, no more being afraid which is not the same thing as saying you suddenly become reckless or careless. I suggest you do in fact continue to look both ways when crossing the street. Okay, fine, but no fear. Instead, with Christ in your life, maybe you can now be the one who properly ends this gospel. Maybe you can be the one who shouts and sings for joy. Maybe you can be the one who runs to tell the good news. Come on, it's Easter. Christ is risen from the dead. Maybe you can be the one who dances. May we all hear the good news of this risen Jesus Christ. May we all be filled with a faith that conquers our fear. And may we dance. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. In our prayers this Easter Sunday, we remember the sick and the suffering and all those in need of the mercies of God. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, on this day you rose from the dead, and by so doing you opened the way of life to your people starting now, lasting forever. All creation sings your praises, and yet oftentimes we are like the first women at the tomb, and we can do nothing more than run away in fear. Lord, you overcame sin and death in the grave. Come to us now, we pray, and help us overcome our fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are afraid of admitting our mistakes, Lord, we are afraid of being embarrassed or humiliated. We're afraid of sharing our faith with others for pretty much the same reason. We're often kind of stuck on how we look to our friends without ever really stopping to think how we may look to you. Convict us, Lord, and free us. Forgive us and send us forth in faith 
as your servants in this world of time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are afraid of economic downturns and what that might mean for us personally, although we don't often think about what it all means for the poor and the hungry. We are worried about increasing property taxes while forgetting the homeless and the refugee. We are afraid of violence, somehow forgetting children who have grown up with it. Get us past ourselves, Lord. Show us your face in the faces of those who suffer today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and for all those who cry out to you for healing. Lauren and Jan, Daphne, Dan, and Beth. We ask that you touch their bodies and the bodies of all those who cry out to you on this day. Stretch forth your hand, Lord, and work a healing in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you are Lord of the living and of the dead. You own the past and the present and the future. They are all in your hands, and we are yours entirely. Free us from all that would keep us from you and lead us into deeper discipleship today and tomorrow too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.